I'm the Reverend Amy Richter. And I'm the Reverend Joe Pagano. Welcome to this service for Maundy Thursday. Light and peace in Jesus Christ, our hope. Thanks be to God. This is the day that Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. This is the day that Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the day that Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done to us. This is the day that Christ our God gave us this holy feast, that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection, and at the last may reign with him in heaven. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment to love one another as he loved them. Write this commandment in our hearts. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all who gave his life and died for us yet is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This hymn is number 502 in the common praise, You Are Salt for the Earth. You are salt for the earth, O people, salt. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. 
O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Glory to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. and When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is One Bread, One Body, and it's number 73. <laughs> reading from the Gospel according to John, 
chapter 13, verses 1 through 17 and 31 through 35. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he had said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, we begin our journey of the three holy days that lead us into the heart of Jesus' passion and death. Today, we hear the story of Jesus' last supper with his disciples before he is betrayed and arrested and led off to die. We hear some of Jesus' last words for his disciples. When I was in college, there was a tradition of asking some of our favorite professors to take part in a lecture series called The Last Lectures. A lot of schools were doing this at the time. Imagine, we said to our beloved teachers, that this last lecture is the last teaching you will ever do. What would you say? Imagine this is your very last chance to gather your students together and impart to them what you've learned and what you most want them to learn. 
what would you say? The lectures were as different as the professors who gave them, but some themes were the same. They offered us advice about what's really important, lasting, things like the pursuit of truth and beauty, being kind and compassionate, serving others. And in the good university, the good Christian university I attended, loving God, knowing that God loved us first. If you had one last message to give, what would you say? If you had to choose one thing you hope those dear to you will do when you're gone, what would it be? Today, we hear how Jesus answered those questions. For Jesus, this is not an exercise. It's not a reflection. It's not an opportunity to get his priorities straight. For Jesus, on this night, it really is his last lecture, his last meal gathered with his disciples, his last chance to speak to them all from his heart before his death. For Jesus, the urgency in giving them his last instructions is real. He knows his death is near. Jesus gives his disciples two commands, two things to do when he's gone. The first is reported for us in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Jesus gives his disciples a meal to share in his memory. Jesus and his disciples have gathered to share the Passover meal, but this time, when Jesus breaks and shares the bread, he gives it a new meaning. It is no longer the bread of the Passover meal, remembering the rescue of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. This bread is now Jesus' body given to redeem the lost, to rescue us all from sin's bondage, and bring us all into the promised land of forgiveness and love. Jesus takes the cup also, and when he has given thanks, he gives the wine a new meaning too. This wine is now Jesus' blood shed for us, the new covenant, the new promise of forgiveness and redemption in Jesus Christ. In this meal, this last meal before his death, Jesus gives us a meal for life, abundant life, eternal life. Take and eat. Take and drink. For you, do this in remembrance of me, Jesus' commandment to his disciples. Jesus' first disciples would not understand the full significance of this meal until after his resurrection. On that night in which he was betrayed, they could not yet understand. This meal was one place where they could always meet the resurrected Christ in their midst. That Jesus would always be present to them in the bread and the wine. That understanding would only come later after the dark hours that followed and the sealing of the promises of life and freedom and forgiveness in this meal through Jesus' death, the breaking of his body and the pouring out of his blood. They also didn't understand the import of Jesus' second command at this last meal. Especially Peter didn't get it. It's recorded in our gospel lesson when Jesus serves his disciples by washing their feet. In Jesus' day, common hospitality included the washing of the feet of those who came into a home. In a household with servants, this lowly job of washing dirty feet was reserved for the lowest rank of servant, Gentiles, women. On this night, Jesus washes his disciples' feet. As their leader, Jesus takes on 
the lowliest task. Peter, so proud of his humility, rejects Jesus. But Jesus tells Peter he must let him serve him. Service is at the heart of who Jesus is. And service, humble, menial, practical service, is at the heart of who Jesus' followers are to be. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. The gift, command, last lecture of a man about to die, a pattern of life for his followers, humble service to others. Jesus sums it all up this way. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. A new commandment, in Latin, novum mandatum, from which this holy night gets its name, Mondi, Thursday. We are to love one another as he loved us us. We are to show that love in service. Jesus calls this a new commandment. Maybe it's better called a hard commandment or an uncomfortable commandment or an inconvenient commandment. We can come up with so many reasons not to serve those in need, not to offer loving acts of service to others. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, writing on ministry, service, in his book, Life Together, said, We must allow ourselves to be interrupted by God. God will constantly be crossing our paths and canceling our plans by sending us people with claims and petitions. But it is part of the discipline of humility that we must not spare our hand where it can perform a service and that we do not assume that our schedule is our own to manage, but allow it to be arranged by God. Only when hands are not too good for deeds of mercy and everyday helpfulness can the mouth joyfully and convincingly proclaim the message of God's love and mercy. A meal and a life of service. These are the last two commands Jesus gives us today. We don't do these things merely to honor the last request of a person who died. We do these things because we know he lives, and in him and keeping his commandments, we find life. Amen. Let us offer our praises and prayers to the one who intercedes for us, saying, Lamb of God, we praise you. Lord Jesus, you embraced the cross so that we might learn to give our lives for the sake of love. Lamb of God, we praise you. Innocent captive, you submitted to the judgment of sinners. Lamb of God, we praise you. In the hour of death, you heard the penitent thief and opened to him the door of paradise. Lamb of God, we praise you. Most merciful Savior, you have known the pain of abandonment. Lamb of God, we praise you. Lord, you love all whom God has made and gave up his own self for them. Lamb of God, we praise you. Through your self-offering, you have brought the crown of life to all people. Lamb of God, we praise you. Sovereign God, you have established your rule over the human heart, not by force, but by the servant example of Jesus Christ. Move us by your spirit to join the joyful procession of those who confess Christ Jesus with their tongues and praise him with their lives. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross and gathering our
prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Uh, this is a song by a Reverend Brian Field McFarland. Uh, he put it on YouTube a couple of years ago, and it's become very popular uh, here. It's called Until All Are Fed. How long will we sing? How long will we pray? How long will we write and send? How long will we May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve with him in joy. Amen.